There's a pretty good chance you know who this is, Itchy Boots. She is currently one of the most famous adventure riders on the planet, and she recently discovered the joy of an endless sea of outrageously slippery, claggy, muddy clay. Many of us have learned how hard this is to ride at some point. From the iconic muddy struggles of Ewan and Charlie to Norrelly's video in Liberia, this stuff is enough to make grown people cry. If you didn't grow up riding it, it is tough. And it led to a situation where the CRF300L that Norrelly was riding had a burnt out clutch. Yeah, this is not good. Supposedly in sixth gear. But this is, this is a problem. It got progressively worse to where she couldn't continue riding anymore. There are some lessons to be learned from this video. So I'm going to explain what she could have done to solve that problem by replicating it myself. Instead of just sitting in my garage telling you and Norrelly how she could have solved this problem, I thought it was much better to come here to Salisbury Plain to show you by riding back to the pub for a pizza and a flat white. Before we start riding, however, I think it's helpful to understand what is going on with your clutch and what it means when it's burnt out. To me, that really helps with solving the problem. And the clutch on a motorcycle is, for the most part, a pretty simple idea. Most bikes use a multi-plate wet clutch. That means we have a number of plates in our clutch and it sits in a bath of oil that helps lubricate it and keep it cool. The idea of a clutch is that it connects the gearbox and the rear wheel to the spinning of the engine. When the clutch is disengaged, the lever pulled in, the two are separate things. You can rev the bike and nothing happens. When engaged, the spinning of the motor turns the rear wheel. It does this using friction. A clutch is made up of two parts, an inner basket and an outer basket. The steel plates lock to the inner basket and these fiber plates with a high friction material on them lock to the outer. Some springs and a plate then squeeze all of this stuff together hard and the friction of everything locks the clutch into one solid unit and gives us drive. In this clip, I'm pulling the clutch lever in and then releasing it. When it's pulled in, the pressure plate lifts and releases the pressure on the entire clutch. No pressure means no friction and no friction means no drive. Once a clutch gets burnt out, it's because this friction material on these plates starts to get worn away. And there isn't enough friction in the whole clutch to hold it together. So it keeps slipping and slipping, gets worse and worse until it's completely non-functional. And this is the important bit. Once it starts slipping, it gets worse rapidly. See. Clutches are designed to be a certain size to allow the clutch to engage and disengage effectively. When that friction material wears away, the clutch pack literally just isn't big enough for the springs and the pressure plate to push down on them and engage the clutch. So we need to solve this in quite a dirty way. Firstly, Norrelly really mentioned she didn't carry a spare clutch in her video. I get why. It's a lot of bulk, but we can be kind of clever about this. It's an old Dakar trick, but carrying a spare clutch plate tied to your radiator fan is a great idea. If you don't want to carry a full stack of fiber plates, it isn't the end of the world. One plate will get you out of trouble if you catch the problem early. Eventually your clutch is going to fail again, but in an emergency situation, that one plate will solve the problem. If your clutch is completely smoked, however, then one plate won't do. If you're in the situation that Norrelly was, then we need solution number two. The goal is to now make the bike a fixed drive bike so effectively it doesn't have a clutch. To do this, I've taken the clutch cover off the right hand side of the bike and exposed the whole clutch mechanism. And now we need to start a small fire and melt the whole thing together in one lump. That's a joke, don't do that. What we actually need to do is take one of these fiber plates and snap it in half. This is gonna kill me, I hate, oh, that's horrible. Now that we've done that, what we're gonna do is take this broken fiber plate, put it together in a little half sandwich and put it into the clutch and that builds the stack height of the clutch back up. The fiber plate you choose to snap in half needs to either be one of the plates that's already in your clutch or be a plate you then replace in your clutch. If you try to add an extra fiber plate to the clutch pack that's already snapped in half, you are never gonna get it done up again. Once we've put this clutch plate back in and we've got this bike into a fixed drive bike, the next thing we need to do is learn to ride a bike without using a clutch. It's tricky, there's no doubt about that, but it is not impossible. On most modern bikes, we next need to solve the problem of the clutch switch. 
We need the bike to think that the clutch is pulled in so that when we try to start it in gear, it will let us. Now, this depends a bit on the type of switch on your bike that you've got. On this Suzuki, when we take the clutch lever off, it already thinks the clutch is pulled in, the switch pops out. On some bikes, it's the other way around and it needs the switch to be pushed in. And you can usually use a little bit of twig to do that. Now that we're all set to go, we need to learn to pull away. And there's kind of two methods. They kind of blend together in how we can do this. The first is the drop it into gear and hope you don't destroy the gearbox method. And the second is to use the starter motor to pull away. Interestingly, on the Suzuki, we can't use the starter motor method. There's some kind of cutout switch in it that when I try to do that, it just turns the bike off. So we'll show you method one and describe method two. This method is harsh on the gearbox, but it does work and it can be done from both a static start and a rolling start. Doing it from a static start is horrible, but sometimes it is also the only option you have. You'll need the bike running and you're going to need some throttle. With the bike running, gently push the bike down into first gear and then turn the throttle further to stop it stalling and help you pull away. The bike is going to lurch forward and will probably wheel spin. This is tricky to get the timing right. It is horrible on the gearbox and it makes me die a little inside. <laughs> Fortunately, Suzuki are well known for having beautiful uh, gearboxes. The much more pleasant alternative to this is to run with the bike. With the engine running, push the bike up to speed and jump on. With a little bit of speed, we can then drop the bike into gear much more gently and we're away. The limit here is that it's hard to push the bike up to speed and if the terrain is not smooth and flat, it is nearly impossible. The other option is to use the bike's starter motor to get everything going. Pop the bike into first gear with the engine off and then start the bike, keeping your thumb on the starter and turning the throttle at the same time. It helps to have flat or downhill ground for both of these methods. And both are harsh on your bike, but they're both gonna get you out of trouble. If possible, and you can't run with the bike, I prefer the second method to just dropping it into gear as it's a bit less crunch on the gearbox. Starter motors are easier to fix than gearboxes too, at least in my head. The next problem on our list, once we've pulled away and we're riding along and I've got my no clutch situation, is you need to be able to change gear effectively. Now, you don't really need a clutch to change gear on a motorbike. The design of motorbike gearbox means that we can work around the design to be able to change gear without disengaging the drive from the engine. So to do this, the first thing you need to do is add a little bit of pressure to the gear lever. We don't need a load of pressure. We're not trying to force it into gear. And with that pressure on the gear lever, if we then chop the throttle at the same time, the bike will slip into the next gear. The same kind of works on the down as well. So we've got some nice drive on and some pressure on the gear lever and then I chop the throttle, the bike will just drop into the gear below. We can do this all the way up and down the gearbox and do it to find neutral. The final piece of the puzzle is being able to stop safely and in control. And really that takes just a little bit of practice of having some finesse on the controls. I go down the gearbox in the same way. Now it's a little bit easier on this because we have a, a nice quick shifter as I've said but really I want to get it to second gear and then just very gently try to let the revs drop until I can find neutral I do that nice and early so I'm not rushed and then sometimes you're gonna to have to be smart this is an uphill turn and we need to go that way but realistically I'm probably gonna to have to go that way and turn into the junction because otherwise I well I'm just not gonna be able to ride up there very nicely And now it's a case of being patient, taking my time and working my way towards the nearest repair center, garage, coffee shop, or in my case, just bolting the clutch lever back on. The one thing I have noticed is that as I've done this a few times, pulled away, stopped and turned around a bunch of times without a clutch, I'm just getting more comfortable with it as well. So it was a little bit scary at first, but now it's getting better. Hopefully that is gonna help you get out of trouble next time you snap a clutch lever off or burn your clutch out. And remember, Life's better when you're riding or able to get to the decent pizza and not have to wait for the tow truck.